Hi friends, today I'm going to read to you a story about an African-American artist and her name is Faith Ringgold. Faith Ringgold was born in New York City in 1930. She grew up during a time of a lot of prejudice and discrimination in the United States. When she became a professional artist, Faith fought hard to make sure that all African-American artists received the attention and respect that they deserved. Her artwork often shows her feelings about being an African-American woman. Faith's most famous works are her story quilts. Faith makes the quilt by sewing together painted canvas and quilted fabrics. She then adds handwritten stories. Faith Ringgold grew up in a section of New York City called Harlem. On hot summer nights, Faith's family and neighbors would go up to the roof of their apartment buildings to cool off. Because the roof was covered with tar paper, everybody called it Tar Beach. She could see her favorite bridge, the George Washington Bridge, all lit up. One of Faith's most famous story quilts is about the magic she felt on those hot summer nights. Storytelling was always an important part of Faith's life. Before people had television in their homes, storytelling and listening to the radio were major forms of entertainment. Faith spent a lot of her childhood at home. She was often sick with asthma. During periods when Faith was sick, her mother Willie schooled her at home. Willie taught Faith how to sew too. Faith made all kinds of neat things. Later, Faith would paint and make prints of jazz musicians and singers. It was in college that Faith made up her mind to become a serious full-time artist. When Faith graduated, she got a job as an art teacher in New York City public schools. During her college years, Faith had learned about all the great European artists. Faith's first paintings were influenced by old master artists. Even though Faith appreciated and learned important lessons from European art, didn't really seem to have much to do with her life or her experiences. Faith started doing paintings that were more meaningful to her. They were about things she saw going on in the United States. Faith studied and copied patterns, shapes, rhythms, and colors used in African art. Faith was beginning to feel good about her art discoveries. In the 1960s, people who owned galleries or ran art museums didn't really think that anyone cared about artwork done by black women. Faith definitely didn't agree. She began showing her artwork to de art dealers all over New York City. She even helped organize protests in front of New York City art museums when they ignored black artists. The protests helped get museum people interested in African-American artists. She saw an exhibition of ancient paintings from Tibet that were framed in cloth. These Tibetan cloth frames are called tankas. Tankas allowed Faith to fold up or roll up her paintings. It wasn't long before Faith was using her sewing skills to create her famous quilts inspired by tankas. Quilt making is an African-American tradition. They often added colorful shapes and designs that came from their African pasts. Faith loved writing stories to go along with her quilt paintings. Writing was just about as important to Faith as painting and sculpting. It's interesting to see how she stitched pieces of painted canvas together and made her colorful cloth frames. It's fun to read the stories on the quilts too. I hope you enjoyed listening to the story about the artist Faith Ringgold.